lesson, you will select, arrange, and install artwork to create your own miniature art museum. Look closely at the artwork you created in the frames last week. Are they similar or are they different? What do you like about each artwork? This week, you're gonna to get to be the curator for your own mini art museum. Who is the curator? A curator's job is to organize artwork in pleasing ways. They often lay out all the artwork before hanging it on the walls to see what it looks like altogether. This week you will be taking on the job of the curator for your museum. Curating artwork. Can you think of ways you can organize your artworks? By size, color, subject matter, theme, chronological order. Test out ways to present your art before attaching it to your museum walls. How was the artwork presented at the museum? Over the years, artists have begun to challenge and change the way people can view works of art. Sometimes the artist chooses to hang their art from the ceiling or place it directly on the floor. Traditionally, two-dimensional artwork is framed and sculptures can sit on pedestals or inside display cases. Curators may work with the artist to decide how to present artworks in a museum. Walls can be painted a different color and the lighting may be adjusted as well. A museum has so many different moving parts and pieces. Who can teach us about the art? A docent is a teacher who works at the museum. They are experts in the museum's collections. They lead tours and answer questions about the art. This week, you will also take on the job of the docent and share your museum with someone else. One of the themes I saw in the artwork I selected was narrative and storytelling. In Elizabeth Telford Scott's plantation, the stars on a white background represent the pattern of stars overhead on the plantation where she grew up, and it tells a story about her family members who are sharecroppers and descendants of slaves. In black, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, pink, Shanique Smith tells a story of her community. She created this 14-foot artwork by collecting and arranging clothing from her friends and family members. Unicorn in Captivity and the Necklace of Medusa Medallion represent myths and folklore. The figurine of the officer in the Dalmatian sculpture can easily be characters in a story written by the viewer, and Andrew Logan's Cosmic Galaxy Egg transports you to another world altogether. What I like best in my artwork is that I was able to capture some of the colors, textures, and patterns in these artworks using very small or limited detail. Let's create art. I'm going to use the artwork I created last week in order to create my mini art museum. To make my museum, I will also use scissors, glue, paint, paint brushes, a pen, and some model magic. But you can use what you have available at home. You will also need something to be the walls of your museum. A shoebox or folded piece of paper work well. Here you can see where I painted the walls, ceiling, and floor of my museum. Next, I carefully cut out each artwork. Then, I tried arranging the artwork in different ways to see what I liked. My original idea didn't work as planned, and I had to rearrange the work before gluing it down. Remember that you can always make additional artwork if you find that you have extra wall space.
Finally, I created a bench for my museum using Model Magic for visitors to sit on. I also created tiny labels with the artist and title of each artwork. The Official Museum Tour After you've created your mini museum, invite family members to an opening night to celebrate the completion of your art museum. Provide a tour of your artwork by acting as the museum's docent. Before your museum tour, think about the following reflection questions. What is your favorite artwork in the museum collection? Why? How did you arrange the artwork inside the museum? How are the artworks presented? Are they in frames? cases, or on pedestals? What makes your museum special? The BCPS Virtual Summer Art Enrichment Camp will offer morning and afternoon sessions for two weeks, July 6th to 17th. Each daily session will include two hours of synchronous, small group instruction. Independent art prompts will be developed for each level to provide extended learning opportunities during the synchronous teaching session. So the first one is a wood mask by the artist Kimmy Kiffrell, and he is a contemporary artist. That means he's alive today. Yes, I could totally see that. So it looks kind of like that, that wouldn't look like a bark of a tree. Yep. Annabelle. Um, uh, the one on the left, I think, like, in the top right corner of it, that looks like a trash bin. I can like, see that. Sort of yeah, sure. with the texture. And the giant nose looks like um, a ruler. Yes, it does. And if you look closely at this one, let me see if I can blow this up a little bit more. Can you guys see that? He's got, like, math problems on the one side. So, on the green side. Today, we're going to create a pattern in relief. And relief is a form of sculpture. So what we're going to do is actually you're going to use paper, scissors, and glue to make the paper come off the page and create a pattern. So I'm going back and forth. I'm not focusing on one specific area of the apple. I'm allowing myself to go back and forth and build in those details as they come. So I started with a really kind of light, sketchy, Teachers will work with small groups of students directly, teaching synchronously and providing immediate feedback throughout the two-hour sessions. Sessions consist of a mix of activities and creative thinking experiences. And then you can start to think about um, like what kinds of things you want to put on your face. So if you, you know, really like, I really like art, so maybe I make, make, make my nose into a paintbrush or something like that. Washes, we talked about flat wash, braided wash. Um, it was when I went to color change. I like the idea of calling it variegated. It sounds very fancy. So, and then so if you're not quite sure what that is, you can see a couple of things up on screen here uh, that were all built as 3D models using a website called Sculpt G. Students enrolled in the camp will receive an age-appropriate art kit of supplies that will be used throughout the two weeks. Additionally, guidance will be offered for setting up a studio space to maximize your potential. My live drawings back here, where I've had my phone open and I was drawing from my phone while you guys are watching me draw. So whatever works for you, you know, I guess we have to take advantage of all the technology we possibly can. Okay, so. And I have a couple of tools that I can use to help me modify the shape. You can see I have a brush, I can inflate, and I have a number of other tools as well. I'm going to start with the inflate tool. As I'm starting and I have a little off-camera apple on a plate here, um, is to start with the local color. The conclusion of camp will include an online virtual art exhibition with artwork uploaded by the end of camp. 
The BCPS Virtual Summer Art Enrichment Camp registration is $175 and can be paid by credit card online with your registration. Alternative payment option requests and questions can be directed to lwilliamson2 at bcps.org. We look forward to seeing you this summer!